Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Fake TV Model 11. These things have been around for a decade, and I uh, picked one of these up at, a, I think, a Salvation Army. And so I had to look it up, and oh my gosh, a lot of people buy these. There's a, between the different models, several thousand reviews just on Amazon alone. And this thing, just on the regular price, is 40 bucks. It's pretty surprising. And I didn't mean to leave people hanging on my previous Duralast review of this T-Handle Ratchet Wrench. I kind of thought... The video was over. You didn't want me to see me install the snap ring. I did install install the snap ring. I chose one with a little bit of extra wide wings. And uh, so it just gives it a little bit more support. If you have any issues, it may be a little bit too loose. And you'll have to... Figuring out washers is probably a difficult task. I've done it, but I use you know very thin shim washers. But in this case, it worked out great. You're always going to have a little bit of play because of the way the heads on round head ratchets or forged, they'll never really be quite as tight as you expect. But we can see right here that it did make a very big difference. Works absolutely great. Uh, it just happened to be just the right sizing with that snap ring. So we have just enough uh, play for it to work. But it is so much more rigid. It feels so much better than that thin snap ring that it had before. And with AutoZone, their parts and tools, it's, they're just ridiculous. They have stuff on the shelves that you can't get off the website and can't ship the store and aren't available in the store, but it's on the shelf. And like with those triple square, uh, these sockets here, the Penelope and triple square, people have commented they couldn't find them, this and that. And my AutoZone has restocked them since I've got those. So even though they may be discontinued on the website, the manager will just notice one is sold. Uh... Put an order in, the warehouse has them in, so just call your actual local AutoZone and see if they have the darn things on the shelf. Make the guy who go walk back there and look. And as far as when I bought that, it was 6-23-2019, so that was like th <laughs> three days ago today. So there may be an alternate part number there, and it was 20 bucks. About the fake TV, let's get on to this review. This is a kind of an interesting device. It makes it look like there's a TV turned on in your house, but the whole purpose of this thing is it's small, compact. Uh, it uses about two watts peak, maybe one, one and a half watts, so they say about as bright as a nightlight, and that's reasonably accurate, although it is pretty bright. Uh, for 40 bucks, uh, they actually has... Uh, you know, it, does, it has okay build quality. It actually is surprising. It's still a plastic cover, but it's pretty thick. It actually has a nice reflector in there. 12 LEDs, 6 white, 3 green, 2 blue, and 1 red. And it has this little chip inside which kind of pulses through it. We will open this thing up. And it's just kind of su supposed to simulate uh, somebody watching the TV. Let me get this stuff out of the way here. And uh, we'll plug it in. There we go. We even get a surface here, and we'll take a look on how it actually looks in a window. But this is what it does. It just kind of makes it look like there's some kind of image or something playing on the TV. There is no sound associated with it. But they sell it as a burglar deterrent just because it does make it look like there is a TV turned on. Indicating somebody is not only home, but is more than likely uh, up and awake and aware. And so uh, I certainly understand the psychology. There's been a lot of cheesy products that don't really do what they advertise over the years. Some of them have attacked, you know, reviewers and that kind of stuff. What's interesting about the fake TV is even though it seems like a cheesy product, which it kind of is, uh, it has a surprising amount of legitimacy to it because of the psychology. It's like if you're somebody who likes to go out camping and hiking one of the things you can do with your car is actually, one, leave it unlocked because they're going to break your window anyway if they're going to break into your car. So might as well leave it unlocked so that you don't have a broken window. And maybe leave five bucks in the console or something so somebody feels like they got away with something. Usually that's what you'll lose if they break into your car is the five bucks and you don't have a broken window and you can just be on your way. Same principle here. Who you know Somebody who thinks that there may be a TV on uh, is going to go elsewhere. So we'll take a look at how this does in the window here. We can shine this in the camera. It's going to be pretty bright. Maybe if I get some more background light, it might be easier. And it's going to flash oddly because the chip is actually turning the LEDs on and off very quickly. But it kind of pulses through the different colors, changes the intensity. And it's a reasonably decent device. It has a little photo sensor here. So when it gets dark, it can turn on and stay on for four hours or stay on for seven hours. 
or it has a permanent on function. Nine volt device. And uh, they have the usual marketing jive. They actually have a surprisingly complete page. It's not just like some normal little cheesy page on Amazon. They have a whole bunch of marketing stuff on there. And uh, for forty, I mean, for forty dollars retail, I mean, still that's a lot of money for the little LED light. I mean, it is pretty solid. I've actually am pretty surprised this will easily bounce off the floor a million times, or it certainly feels like it. The Basically, the point of it is a device like this does have some legitimacy, and this one is pretty well built and pretty bright. It says it advertises as a 40-inch TV. Not quite as much light, not at all. Uh, two, one to two watts of LEDs, two watts peak, is not going to be the same amount of overall illumination as a 40-inch TV. Modern TVs are bright as heck, and computer monitors, heck, I run my computer monitor at 35%. When I had an old tube, that thing was running at 80 or 90% brightness. The other thing you have to remember is on Amazon, there is a myriad of uh, LED color devices that could emulate or would certainly look in the, you know, the diffuse light coming through a curtain on a window uh, that would reproduce the effect of this for at less than $40. Sorry for that weird jump, but this was just to exemplify for like 25 bucks. You can get one of these. This thing is pretty long. This is uh, 15 feet of this electronic digital uh, LED light strip. These aren't like the traditional light strips. These have little microchips in them. So these are digital light strips with this controller. And so versus this for 40 bucks, with something like this, you get a radio remote control. And... Uh, it's a lot more advanced. I mean, there it's a digital light strip. And this thing has, you know, a hundred and some odd different modes. Just to uh, exemplify what you can get for the value. Let's take a look at what this, how they, this really looks like from outside again. Here it is with the vertical slat blinds. It's, you can... Here it is again, two layers of a sheer curtain with a cat silhouette. And you can kind of see it works a little better like that. So anyway, I just wanted to show kind of what it looked like in a window. It does illuminate pretty well, but if you have some pretty solid blinds like those vertical plastic slap blinds like I have, it blocks almost everything, but it still kind of provides a little bit of light around the edge. Essentially my review of this, uh, kind of an interesting device. Really, uh, this thing should be, you know, for her, how much they're charging for it, uh, honestly, five, five dollars, ten dollars. That's really my honest opinion. And it isn't that, you know, it really doesn't do what it isn't supposed to do. It does kind of look like, uh, for sure, a TV show that's playing. It is reasonably bright, reasonably well built, but come on, forty dollars, you can get a real TV used flat screen, an older flat screen or something. And use an actual TV uh, with sound. It might use a little bit more power. That is true. This only does use a couple of watts. So it might be good for vacation rentals or if you have an Airbnb or those types of situations. Otherwise, yeah, for 40 bucks, I mean, heck. I'll get you like an, old, uh, an older 20-inch or 21-inch little flat screen TV off of uh, Craigslist or Internet Classifieds. Anyway, that's the end of my review of the fake TV. It's an interesting device. I think it's too expensive for what it is and what it does. But don't think those are, you know, they're, you know, the people who are buying these, you know, they, they do what they say. And so I'm not going to criticize the few, you know, a few thousand people have left reviews. So thousands, if not tens of thousands of these things have been sold over the decade that they've been around. So I'm not going to criticize them uh, for that at all. Just so they have pushed the prices way too high on something that probably costs them, a, you know, a few dollars, three or four dollars or so to manufacture. And you also have to understand things that are manufactured, you have to triple, quadruple the amount of money, uh, your, you know, your profit to actually make a business work selling manufactured products. It's really how it works. You can't build something that costs you five dollars to build and sell it for six dollars and actually pay employees and taxes and advertising and all that kind of stuff you have to get something that you make for five dollars and you got to try to get twenty dollars for it fifteen dollars on special sales and rebates that's really what it takes 
all of the points of the food chain to keep a business going and the pay people and all that kind of stuff. You really do have to make a wide margin, just not as wide as it is on this one. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick look inside. We'll just see, you know, what kind of circuits they have and take a look at the little LED elements. Otherwise, that's the end of this review of this little fake TV device. The FTV11, which is ever popular. But on to uh, getting inside this device. It does have a little right angle plug. There's a little socket under there. Both are made in China. This uh, is a 9 volt power adapter, and these are kind of handy. So even if this thing dies, the power adapter could be useful because there's so many devices that use 9 volt batteries, and this is a good uh, power brick to use to replace those. We actually have four screws on the back, too, are covered by the sticker, so we'll just exacto out uh, the holes for the sticker. We can just see the silhouette right there. You can see it. And we'll just get in. Whoop. I'm not so good at exactoing. We'll exacto that little thing out. Come on now. So we have a little steel wire right there. I can probably pick up with that. Oh, we'll just leave it. And we've got another one right here. Saw a little bit. Oh. And there we go. I like did get that little wire. And we have some uh, number one Phillips that appears. They're large screw holes, but they're actually tiny little screws that are down in there. And we'll pull those out. They're not too bad. Sometimes you can really tell the grade of a plastic. Eh, it feels like ABS. Um, just by how tight the screws are. There's uh, like those little skill drivers. Uh, I used to open up that AutoZone package for the T-handle tap wrench. It has little screws like this. But man, you have to have a huge amount of pressure. Uh, you can barely unscrew them because they are so darn tight. It's really surprising. And I was going to make a quick video with somebody had asked about... Uh, the quick little modification I did to get it to charge without the factory charger. Alright, so it comes apart from the front. There's a little front case. We actually have a little insert here. Which is pretty well... There we go. That's actually pretty clean. When they Actually, there's almost no dust on that at all. So when this was manufactured, these are probably all sitting face down they're all assembled face down to keep the dust down but that is surprisingly clean and actually looks like the silvering is surprisingly good decent quality control here's our little plastic panel it's actually a reasonably thick how's that center oh i see the little plastic panel sits in there like so so at least that's easy to get apart and then everything apparently is just all integrated on this board. There's going to be the little switch. Let's see if we can't just get this out of here. Come on now. Why is it not cooperating? Oh, interesting. They put a couple pieces of steel in there just to give it a little bit of extra weight. Oh, I thought it was more solid than it really is. Uh, although that's not really that bad. You know, you, you could criticize that, but it does provide a little bit of extra mass just so the thing doesn't slide around so much and want to get pulled off uh, by the cord. Um, but still, it's interesting. It's always funny just to see weights inside an electronic device. And there it is. I mean, besides this molding, which is actually the, probably just as expensive as this because the molds all require dies to be cut into expensive steel and then the machines to put them all in and then to injection mold it and it's actually a surprisingly expensive startup cost is to get the molds cut uh, for the housing versus getting a custom circuit board manufactured and yes this is upside down but now we're right side up and I am really surprised this actually is one of their own designs Hydreon it's not somebody else really is a fake TV board, and there's three patent numbers on that. Unbelievable. Something else, this is a white-coated board, so more uh, a little bit more rough reflectivity, and it does make it last just a little bit longer. We have some discoloration, so this is part of the soldering process when they put on the power plug there. 
uh, decent multi-position switch. These are capacitors, these metal cans, and these are known as aluminum polymer capacitors. These are actually much higher grade than the traditional black ones with the plastic uh, wrap around them, known as electrolytic capacitors. Those have an average lifespan, those are, you know, 35 or so years. Uh, under the right conditions, under harsh use, they can die in just a few years, and that's one of the issues, is the liquid electrolyte. These types of capacitors are 50-year capacitors, the aluminum, the polymer capacitors. So it's actually refreshing to see that this is a higher-grade board just from that. And I actually understand this board <laughs> well enough to point out, uh, because we have our power in, some you know capacitors just to uh, smooth out the electricity. I believe this chip is a voltage regulator. The big one, obviously, is the brains, which switching them all around. And then all these little black chips are little transistors, which are actually driving the LEDs. The LEDs use too much power for all that power to go right through one of these chips. So this chip runs transistors, and then the transistors are what handle the higher power to actually drive the LEDs. Once I learned that, it became much easier for me to upgrade LEDs in various electronics, because you realize you can just, um, if it was drive by a chip, you can just add a cup uh, transistor and then upgrade the LED to be something super bright. So anyway, that's what is, was inside of this device. Anyway, I'm going to add this video there. I'll we'll plug it in so you can see the lights go just on the board. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.